Hi, we are delighted to be part of the EIN Virtual Congress. Let me start by briefly introducing European Federation of Neurological Associations, or EFNA. We are an umbrella group representing and adding capacity to pan-European neurology patient groups. One of our main focuses is advocacy towards European Union's institutions. Since last year, we also expanded our activities to cover global health. We see a strong link between European and global health agenda, and here is why. It has never been more clear than it is now during the COVID pandemic that health is a shared global value. We live in a global village where countries share many of the same health problems, though perhaps of different magnitudes. Most domestic health issues require international solutions and we need to work together to share solutions to common problems. We can no longer consider the health of particular countries in isolation. Globalization, globalization created convergence of the health problems of individual countries and mutual dependence for generating solutions. This interdependence means that the pool of resources we now have is greater than ever. At the same time, decisions affecting countries and regions such as the European Union are often made at the international level. Having this conceptual framework, I now invite you to have a quick look at what has been happening in global public health in the last decade. Many more milestones took place, but I strived to pick the most relevant ones for the neurological community. Some 10 years ago, a major shift could be observed in moving from communicable to non-communicable diseases, or NCDs. This shift was informed by global burden of disease data, which showed that NCDs had become the leading cause of mortality in the world. A vast body of knowledge and experience started accumulating regarding, regarding immense opportunities for global action to control them. This has been captured in the political declaration following the first high-level meeting on NCDs in 2011. Four major disease areas have ever since been ruling the NCDs global agenda, and that is cardiovascular disease, diabetes, chronic respiratory disease, and cancer. As a result, by 2013, WHO developed a global action plan to operationalize the commitments made in the declaration. In the same year, 2013, nine global targets were identified that are still valid today. And I'll come back to these targets as they are relevant to our discussions here. The second high-level meeting followed in 2014 and it already became clear that the initial goals were taking much longer to achieve than planned. Also in 2014, a global coordination mechanism was set up where, apart from member states and other institutions such as UN agencies, also civil society was invited to participate. Same year still, 2014, a report was prepared on the nine targets. One year later, the most important commitments of the decade were, were captured in 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, including health-related targets. In a preparation to the following high-level meeting on NCDs, a commission was set up to work on the synergies between SDGs and NCDs. The commission's report reinforced the role of civil society and patience and included a strong push for mental health. Meanwhile, WHO had been undergoing a major overhaul and the agenda of the so-called triple billion targets was announced in 2018, encompass encompassing universal health coverage, 
health emergencies and better health and well-being. The third high-level meeting on NCDs followed with a political declaration where, for the first time, neurology was recognized as a distinct priority area and was added, along with mental health, as so-called fifth NCD. This would complement efforts to combat cancer, cardiovascular, chronic respiratory disease and diabetes. This, at least in theory, was major positive news for the global brain health community. One more high-level political declaration followed a year later at the UN meeting on universal health coverage. Neurology featured even more prominently there, and I'll explain on that later in the presentation. So to recapulate, currently, and I should also add in a pre-COVID time, we have the following broad lines defining global health policies, sustainable development goals, and in particular SDG3, which is ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being for all at all ages and one of the concrete goals is reducing by 2030 by one third premature mortality from NCDs. Then we have universal health coverage, the triple billion goals and of course initiatives on NCDs. In the coming slides, I would like to briefly zoom in on some challenges that are lying ahead in achieving these ambitious goal global goals to tackle NCDs, specifically for neurology, as well as exploring how, at EU level, this agenda is being reflected. Starting with NCDs as a whole, on this graph, you can see calculations that were made for dollars spent per attributable disability adjusted life year or DALI on NCDs, maternal disorders, neonatal disorders, tuberculosis, HIV and malaria for the year 2015. I'll not read what the detailed number was for each of these diseases. I think that this graphic does a good job in showing how unpopular it is to invest in NCDs globally. And in case you don't know where NCDs actually are on the graph, they, there they are. Let me pause for a few seconds to let this image really sink in. And this is the whole of NCDs including conditions like cancer and cardiovascular disease. If we were to put on this graph neurological disorders separately, we would need to magnify the scale multiple times to even see the corresponding dot. So with this, let's now segue to neurology. As mentioned earlier, mental health and neurology was added as the fifth NCD in 2018. This should be great news for us, but it is not exactly so. The message that has gone out to the global community was that mental health became the fifth NCD, even though neurology was meant to be part of it. There was a handful of stakeholders such as NCD Alliance and University of Auckland, to name a few, who knew that. However, it is not surprising that the vast majority of the world had not have much clue that, for WHO, mental health also implicitly includes neurology. Why is that so? Some explanation can be provided by looking at the administrative structure of the WHO, where neurology is covered by the Department of Mental Health and Substance Use. Its mission is to reduce the burden associated with mental, neurological and substance use disorders. Its name, however, only mentions mental health and substance use. It is hard to understand, indeed, why neurology was omitted from the Troika in the department's name. Not surprisingly, 
in various WHO strategies, merely a lip service is paid to neurology, which often is there just nominally. Examples include two recent WHO documents, which aim to integrate the new fifth NCD, which, as we know, is mental health and neurology, within the current NCDs, as well as the UHC agendas. Both papers, in their introductions, explain that the scope covers mental and neurological disorders. However, further on, when looking at examples and case studies, we see conditions such as depression, anxiety, psychosis, alcohol dependence, or dementia at most. Not the best representation of neurology, really. At EFNA, we have been leading a number of efforts to build coalitions and raise clearly our concerns related to this WHO terminology, and you'll hear a bit on that in the coming slides. We feel that the current terminology is reinforcing misconceptions and leading to insufficient priority being given to the field of neurology or brain health within the WHO, its member states and our society. Moreover, mentioned earlier in this talk, there are nine voluntary global targets that oblige governments to set national NCD targets for 2025. These have not been updated to reflect the new priorities. Neurology is nowhere to be seen other than stroke, which is seen as a cardiovascular disease here. Turning to our own turf, European Union, we can see a clear and direct influence that this global narrative has on the European Commission priorities. Here you can see a snapshot from the EU main portal addressing NCDs. The Commission doesn't seem to notice that a substantial change in priorities happened in 2018. And while on some other occasions it did start to pay more attention to mental health, a mention of neurology is nowhere to be found. The last line here mentions Eurostat data that is also an important source of defining EU priorities. What can we learn from it? This Eurostat report from 2019 looks at the causes and occurrences of death in the EU. Again, headlines are made with heart, stroke, still seen as a cardiovascular disease despite a recent rec reclassification in ICD-11, and then cancer. Even the diseases of the digestive system are mentioned before brain disorders, which are classified here as mental and behavioral diseases such as dementia, as well as diseases of the nervous system. Putting aside other big reservations that one can have with the methodology behind such studies, it is also clear that if we are atomized between mental, nervous system and so on, rather than under one heading of brain disorders, we will remain much weaker. So you have this data on the one hand and the Lancet, Lancet findings from 2017 on the other, which are in a stark contrast. I mean, if we are to equate diseases of the nervous system with neurological disorders, we come up to just 4% in Eurostat, but with almost 17 reported by Lancet. In fact, Lancet reports that neurological disorders are the second largest cause of global deaths. There are some considerations here to take into account, such as where stroke is classified or the geographic scope, but it is still difficult to grasp this huge discrepancy in data. Now it becomes a little more clear why the EU pays little attention to our field. One more EU official body deals with priority setting and implementation of EU health policies, and that is the EU Steering Group on Health Promotion, Disease Prevention and Management of NCDs, quite a mouthful. It was set up to support countries in reaching the health targets of the SDGs, it is composed 
of representatives from EU member states. It picks priority areas and promotes exchanges of relevant experience, policies and practices between member states. Up until this year, cancer, cardiovascular and mental health were prioritized. Mental health was picked in 2019, likely as a result of addition of mental health of the, as the fifth priority and with a complete omission of neurology. Alarmingly, the Commission does not see any need or importance for raising the profile of neurology, which we could also note in the answer that was given by the Health Commissioner to EFNA's parliamentary written question that was supported by 17 MEPs, including one Vice President of the Parliament. You can read here part of the responses, which says, in 2018, the steering group prioritized mental health. The group has not prioritized specific neurological or brain health activities, and the Commission will not be developing a dedicated strategy on this theme. It is very hard to understand why neurology and brain health have such a little priority when we look at their disease burden. This first slide demonstrating the burden has been actually put together by the European Commission's department dealing with scientific research, which, truth be told, invests considerably in brain research. They calculated that collectively some 1 billion people are affected by brain disorders globally, with depression and dementia make, making for nearly half of that amount. This is a small collection of other key studies. We've already discussed the Lancet results, which are reporting the largest cause of DALIS and the second largest of global deaths. Another recently published study looks at the burden of brain disorders in Europe in 2017 with comparison with other NCD groups, so other four big categories, cancer and so on. Its findings report that brain disorders account for just short of 27% of the total burden associated with NCDs, making it the NCD group with the largest burden. And everyone should know well by now the European Brain Council's calculations revealing that one third of the EU population will be affected by at least one brain disorder during a lifetime, with annual cost of some 800 billion euros, more than all the other major disease areas combined. And here is another way of showing this combined effect. When we also add in the results of EAN's new project on Eurocare, we should have a very powerful evidence for advocacy. But what opportunities are there for this? So far, one could have a rather grim picture when it comes to the place that neurology and brain health occupies in the global public health domain. But it is important to note that in the last couple of years, there have been some very positive signs reversing that trend. We already mentioned that neurology, along with mental health, has been included in 2018 as one of the key NCDs and that this has been reinforced through the political declaration on the universal health coverage from last year. Actually, the so-called draft zero included no mention of neurology. Upon seeing this draft, EFNA mobilized vast resources to prevent neurology from being sidelined again. We have, we have engaged EAN, EBC and WFN, drafted a letter and sent it out to some 100 governments, including all of the WHO Executive Board, WHO UN missions in Geneva and all EU Member States Health Ministers. We issued a strong call for recognizing neurology as an integral part of mental health and main NCDs. The final text has seen a significant improvement in that regard, and neurology is now mentioned in a number of places in the declaration next to mental health. 
Another important development in 2019 includes creation of the unit in WHO International called Brain Health. The unit is nested under the Department of Mental Health and Substance Use, and this is a clear departure from the WHO previous approach that hardly ever saw brain health as a distinctive category. Among this unit's goals is formulating an integrated approach to brain health. Half a year ago, EFNA met in Geneva with the director of the unit. We are eager to see the development of such an integrated approach to brain health, and we expressed our interest in being involved in this process. An extension of this new approach to brain health has been also seen in the agenda of WHO Mental Health Forum meeting that EFNA attended last year. This is a program to scale up care for mental, neurological and substance use disorders. As far as we know, this was the first time when brain health was formally included in the agenda of WHO meeting. We also observed that the brain health concept is not yet very well grasped by majority of WHO member states. Perhaps just the EU countries seem to have an understanding of, of the concept of brain health. This is a slide that has been shown during the forum, and I'll not dissect it here, but you are free to study it later as these slides should be available to anyone interested. Another very promising initiative was carried out during the latest WHO Executive Board meeting in February this year. Epilepsy was, was on the meeting agenda and EFNA piggybacked on the efforts that have been made by many international groups, including the International League Against Epilepsy and the International Bureau for Epilepsy. The idea was to use epilepsy as an entry point for a broader discussion on using the term neurological or brain health. We have sent out to member states a concept note endorsed by EFNA, EAN and EBC calling for an amalgamation of WHO work on specific neurological disorders into a more strategic, long-term and coordinated action on brain health. The outcomes of the meeting were extremely promising. Russia, China, all EU member states, as well as several other countries, tabled a formal decision that was then adopted by the board. It called on member states to discuss a draft resolution on epilepsy and other neuro neurological disorders and requested the WHO Directorate General to expand the scope of the epilepsy report by adding a new section entitled Synergies in Addressing the Burden of Epilepsy and Other Neurological Disorders. These files were meant to be discussed at the upcoming WHA World Health Assembly meeting in May this year. Due to a current pandemic, the assembly will take place virtually with a very condensed agenda, mostly focused on COVID. However, WHO did already prepare the requested report on neurological disorders published just these days. This report has a promise of being a game changer catalyzing much needed upscale of neurology into mainstream NCD response. Among many points, the report recognizes the immense burden of neurological ill health. It notes in point 38 that existing high-level commitments on NCDs and universal health coverage have not afforded neurology, neurological conditions the political priority on national agendas that they require and fall short on tangible global commitments to reduce the burden of neurological disorders. Point 39 mentions a possibility of creating an integrated approach to all neurological disorders. Fostering research on neurology and brain health is also encouraged. This promises to be a long-awaited golden window for neurology. It will be now very important to continue pushing WHO and member states to operationalize these ideas. We cannot lose sight of it due to a current pandemic. And in general, COVID will cause us all to revisit our advocacy strategies. We need to ensure that it doesn't push neurology further down the agenda 
but allows us to reposition ourselves more visibly by linking in to recent policy priorities. So it's a challenge and opportunity at the same time. At EFNA, we want to take stock of those changes and open a much needed debate in Brussels, where, as we know, neurology is not seen as any priority. To this end, along with EAN and EBC, EFNA organized a meeting in the European Parliament in the second half of February, just before all meetings started to be cancelled. We had senior representatives from the biggest parliament political parties and one of the parliament vice presidents co-hosting the meeting. Among speakers and participants, there were directors from WHO and the Commission, the European Commission, representatives from the upcoming German EU, pre German EU presidency, NCD alliance and more. At the meeting, we launched a call to action and in the afternoon, we brainstormed behind the closed doors with key patient groups on the way forward. A few weeks later, the meeting was covered in Lancet, Lancet Neurology editorial. And I want to finish by emphasizing how important it is that the neurology community is coming together and forming a global voice to advocate for a proportionate inclusion of neurological health in global health agenda. We are aware that there are some initiatives that aim to address this, such as the Global Neurology Alliance. At the same time, we are somewhat worried that there doesn't seem to be sufficient understanding on just how essential it is to have patient organizations fully and formally included in such groups. It is hard to overestimate how important it is that patients work hand in hand with scientific societies when it comes to the area of policy and advocacy. The experience shows that patients are often much better equipped and skilled when it comes to dealing with policymakers. We need each other. With this in mind, EFNA is in, the, in discussion with our counterparts in Europe and across the globe to strengthen the global voice of neurological patients. As such, we hope to collaborate with relevant partners and come up with structures and mechanisms for a more meaningful engagement of patient groups so that together we increase the global advocacy capacities for neurological health. The competition in the global health has always been strong. We need to find our place at the global table. We need to be active and bold. And the only way of doing this is by working together in full partnership. Thanks for your attention.